So just like everything else in the diencephalon, um, the subcortical white matter is named by where it is. So um, subcortical, it means it's below the cortex. So all of the white matter in the subcortical area consists of myelinated axons. That's why it's white. So um, way back in chapter one or two, we said, hey, why is white matter white? Because it has a lot of fat. Um, and it has a lot of myelin, which is made of fat. And so all of these are axons, myelinated axons, that are passing information back and forth in the brain. So there are three different um, categories of subcortical white matter. Projection fibers, which can be either ascending or descending. And projection means they're going from one area to another. They're projecting information from one area to another, if you think of it that way. So we have pro projection fibers that go from the thalamus to the cerebral cortex, and from the cerebral cortex to um, the motor system, the motor tract. So those projection um, fibers are taking, thing, taking information from one place to another. We have commissural fibers, which are connecting um, the two hemispheres of the brain, and we have association fibers which are um, sort of connecting individual areas. So when we talk about the um, projection fibers, there is a group of fibers that's known as the internal capsule, and when you look at cross sections of the thalamus, it shows up as white areas. So the internal capsule projection fibers convey signals from subcortical structures to the cerebral cortex and from the cerebral cortex to the spinal cord, brainstem, basal ganglia, and thalamus. So these guys are taking important information to and from the cerebral cortex. Um, thalamocortical projections relay somatosensory, visual, auditory, and motor information to the cerebral cortex. So that's all that um, data that we're getting in that we're then going to use to make decisions and um, create motor planning. So commissural fibers connect the homologous areas of the cerebral hemispheres. Um, the corpus callosum is the largest group of commissural fibers which link many areas of the right and left hemispheres. So this is that um, T1 imaging which you come out with the coolest images um, and you can see the different fibers and where they go. Um, so the really the areas where you are linking the two hemispheres, it's coordinating a lot of the information processing. Um, association fibers connect cortical regions within one hemisphere. So association fibers are staying all on the right or all on the left. Short association fibers connect ad adjacent gyri whereas the long ones connect lobes within one hemisphere. So um, this is just some examples of the um, individual association fibers. So a lot of the areas in our brain, and we'll talk about this in the next section, the areas of the cerebral cortex, some are dedicated to specific things like sensory or motor, but a very large percentage are um, what are considered association areas where they're integrating and processing information. So these association fibers are important for that information processing. So the internal capsule um, is in the thalamus, it's that white matter area, um, and occlusion or hemorrhage of artery, arteries supplying the internal capsule is common. But even a small lesion can have severe consequences because of all the important information that's going from the thalamus to the cerebral cortex. Um, sometimes they are, um, they do what's called a colostomy in cases of intractable epilepsy when there's excessive neuronal activity that can't be controlled by medication. Um, or sometimes they'll do surgical damage of a single cortical site. So what they do with the colostomy is they um, actually sever the corpus callosum, which is the, um, the uh, fibers that go in between the, um, the two hemispheres of the brain, and um, they do that to control that intractable epilepsy. And it's really kind of cool that um, 
you could actually have that done and your brain still works. But they're interesting, um, you get interesting results on specialized tests um, of vision and stereognosis because you're not integrating the information between the two sides. So um, you'll see, I sort of remember the first time um, hearing about this was in a psychology class. And a lot of the, um, before there was a lot of uh, the imaging and um, different techniques that we have now to visualize what's going on in the brain, um, a lot of times they didn't find out what was going on in individual areas of the brain unless they were doing surgery or someone had a loss in a particular area. So um, this was one procedure that allowed um, researchers to figure out some of what was going on between the two hemispheres. It's kind of interesting in a historical sense. Um, we talked about the basal ganglia um, in a previous chapter. We know that they're vital for uh, normal motor function. Um, we, we also know that they um, function with uh, cognitive and some other areas, motivation. So they, the basal ganglia sequence movement, regulate muscle tone and muscle force. They select and inhibit specific motor synergies and they're involved with the cognitive functions of sustained attention, ability to change behavior as task requirements change, that quick, um, quick changing from one task to another, and motivation. So um, it's a huge, huge area. And we'll talk just a little bit about um, some of those areas um, in the next module.